the stone couldn't stop Jesus. It can't stop me. It can't stop me. That which could not stop Jesus won't stop me. That which could not stop Jesus can't stop me. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. Shall not prevail. No, they can't prevail. Now let's look at the different meanings of, the, of Jesus' tombstone. Because when we say the stone that could not stop Jesus, it's a stone of his tomb where he was buried. And his burial was the final destination in the mind of those who opposed him. They thought when we bury him, we will end him. So let's look at the two principal meanings the two principal significance of or two principal dimensions of the significance of the stone the tombstone of Jesus let's look at Matthew chapter 27 verse 59 to 60 I hope somebody is taking note because everyone under the sound of my voice there is a stone there is a stone that is a, an active ongoing conspiracy to make sure you are stopped if there is no stone actively working to stop you, it means you have no destiny. It means you have no purpose. It means you don't exist. You are a phantom. You are a phantom. You are a mirage. The water that appears in front of you but does not exist. Everyone that was sent for a purpose. Everyone that was sent unto earth for a purpose including those who are being used by the devil actively if you see somebody that is used by the devil actively and seriously it is a confirmation of purpose because the devil does not create he corrupts so if you are here and the devil is using you attacking you and corrupting you are not is because you have a very important purpose so the devil ceases it was an urban that used a ministry that took place here that changed something in our family and talked about the difference between prisoners and captives. You know, I preach, but some people, just one person or two can take a word and that brought a deliverance in our household. Deliverance and encounter of deliverance. One day you will give that testimony. You will. No, you will. You will. One day she will give the testimony and she will talk about it with her mouth. When that day comes, you are the one to beg me that you will talk about it. You will beg me that you will talk about it. Go and write it down. She's been in something. I have. She, she's my sister, my elder sister. I've seen her cry. We cry together. Call me on phone and just cry. Cry. And she will even know on this side, I'm also having tears. Because she means a lot to me. And we will start praying about the same thing, praying about the same thing, praying about the same thing. And another time, she says, Father, I don't get them be Like Father, I don't know what to do again. No. <laughs> and I will just try to come at her. Some other time, she will come into the office and just sit down and cry. <laughs> this strong professor cries. <laughs> And it was that ministry, I think it must have been either last year or so, during spiritual warfare. And by this month, spiritual warfare has started. By, by next week, we are combining it with Pentecost visitation. So it's good we talk about this in advance to know. I will not change the program of God in this place to accommodate your laziness. Oh, I was sent to raise people. Those that I'm to raise, they would trek 100 miles to be here. Those that I have no business with them, I don't need them. So, one week, 
12 next Sunday from 13th to the 19th which is Pentecost Sunday on a weekly meeting that will mean so much I've been preparing myself I've gone back to exercise to prepare myself to stand through that moment on a daily basis to minister the Holy Ghost to you and so that with the help of the Holy Ghost we can go into warfare let me let you know the theme in advance give us help against the enemy for the help of man is useless yeah, yeah. media you will get the scripture and put so that is what we are praying from today from today in preparation for that encounter beginning from next Sunday and especially daily from next Monday after tomorrow you begin to rise at the prayer belt in your fasting when is the fasting has begun Never give me help the help of husband is useless the help of wife is useless the help of governor is useless the help of president is useless the help of the president the help of ministers the help of pastors are useless if God does not help you your helper will kill you this one is not a curse, so it's not a prayer. I'm just telling you the truth, though. Sir, doctors have helped in killing their patients. Pharmacies have killed people. Nurses have helped people to die. Many people die in hospital. We don't know why. I have seen a nurse putting, putting, drip, dripping my wife in the process of Nini and the tummy. At the point, drip has finished and blood is now <laughs> I had to I didn't sleep the whole night if I slept one minute you know, I would have gone I had I did not sleep those of you that your wives are going for labor and you are you are in a joint I'm not like you I used to be a Catholic priest so I don't know how people marry I'm just figuring out by help because I know I'm not supposed to marry so I'm, I'm very interested in marriage <laughs> because I know this is not what I'm supposed to do so because you know you are supposed to marry but you are not serious so I don't sleep the whole night when my wife is putting to bed that night we resume in the hospital together until everything is done I will still come here and preach to you but I resume from there sometimes I come from there and I'm doing ministry and from here I go back there and do the night watch there so that's how we do this business until my baby is put in my hand don't go anywhere go, go nowhere no way so that night I had to wake up say devil for my random but nurse I had hurry come and she and she had a very bad attitude she's no longer there very bad attitude they didn't like me because people don't like you when you want to get things right Say no, you don't use my wife to experiment on your usefulness. Usefulness. No, no, we settle that. So nurses have killed a lot of people. Killed a lot of people. Doctors are, say, if God does not help you, you are an accident waiting to happen. Write it down. What else do you write down? That I'm talking and you. <laughs> Who told you I came here today to play? Do I look like some a player? <laughs> I'm a fighter. If God does not help you, you are an accident. Waiting to do what? And all the helpers who have promised you help, they will help to bury you. Sir, God is the helper of destiny. So, if you don't rise up at night to pray, prayer belts is anytime you can rise between 12 and 1 at the covenant level as a family. Sir, when we talk about family, is together. Be it there my daughter to teach me family when she was one year old. Sorry, I'm talking too much about myself. My daughter taught me about family. They are the one teaching me about father. They are the one teaching me about family. My daughter taught me family. She was one year old. So my daughter just will let us know. I and Ian will teach us something. She will sit down. And I will say, mommy, sit here. Daddy, sit here. And she will sit in the middle. And I want to stand up to go and answer call, and she will call me back. Daddy, sit here. So the best time I realized the best time in our life was the time we sit together. And now all of them, both of them, who can articulate well, now and again they ask me, "Mommy, Daddy, are we going to eat today as a family?" That means we sit on the same table and eat from the same. It's the best time of their lives. If you watch children, they are programmed to make you family. I didn't know about it. 
they taught me. So when we eat together, everybody, everywhere is scattered confusion everywhere and you end up not eating. But the best thing that has happened to the next generation because they have seen family. Why some of your children, they run away. The more you call them, the more they disappear. You, they never saw family. You were not there. You were not there. You were not there. Same time, you are not even there. This one that I'm talking now, even as I'm talking now, where did you sleep last night? I'm not there. And when things go wrong, you look for pastors who will perform magic. Say, just lay your hand on this, my baby. I cannot lay hand miraculously in one day and end what you had programmed for 20 something years. Your foolishness and irresponsibility of decades cannot just disappear by a pastor that lays hand. God will allow you to walk. Take responsibility. There are many miracles that cannot happen. So God is, I am in the ministry of changing lives. But the issue of just lay your hand so that I can run around again. God will be part of the process. Come back home. So what I will do to such a father, I will give you opportunity. Start laying hands yourself. Start doing what you never did. Start doing. Let's do it together. I was not sent to be a, a distant pastor. I was sent to turn you into a family pastor. Praise God. I say praise God. Stones. Let's talk about the stone of Jesus. The two meanings of the stone of Jesus. Matthew. Did I talk about it? That Matthew chapter 27 verse 59 has a dimension. The prayer belt. Yes, let me tell this. That you have to pray. Praise So you rise between 12 and 4. As a family. Praise God. That's what led me to this. Family. So when we stay together to pray, something happens. Whether the together is physical or spiritual. Like when you rise at home. When you rise at work. Any place. In that same covenant. Whether it's from 12 to 1. Or 1 to 2. Or 2 to 3. Or 3 to 4. Or you want to pray the whole of that time. If you have all the time. Or you want to pray just one hour. Two hours. If your own is so small. That it's only 30 minutes. Just rise with the family. And join and speak. This week. That is the covenant. Give me help against the foe. The help of man. Does not take me far. Because we are preparing for the helper to come. And helper will help me. Right, say, my helper will help me. No, don't say my helper because I don't know which one is your helper. Some of you here, you are helped by your girlfriend. Who say, marry me. I have a good job even though you don't have a job. When we marry, things say, I, I'm not talking. So don't say my helper. Say, the helper. The Praise God. Some of you, you are helped by those who are planning to kill you. Say my helper, but see, I can your helper. Raise your voice again. Say the helper will help me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see that? So the prayer belt opens on this note. From tonight, we are speaking throughout for two weeks. We're going to beg God for help from heaven. I look unto the hills from whence my help comes. My help shall come from maker the maker of heaven and earth matthew chapter 27 and verse 59 to 60 i talk about many things because there are too many things to talk about let's look at the first meaning of the stone of jesus when joseph had taken the body he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth joseph the arimathea a man of arimathea who sympathized who felt pity for jesus he had nobody or he had people he healed thousands or had nobody at that moment nobody had made provision for his death because he was not supposed to die nobody had thought about where he would be buried because he was not supposed to be buried he didn't talk like somebody who will have to be buried so there was no plan he was buried in a borrowed tomb that was my tomb the tomb of jesus in my tomb he borrowed it from me borrowed it from my ancestors Borrowed from my ancestors. So the tomb does not have a final word again. I, care, I don't care what, what people see in the dream. I see this, see this. Some of you see something about me in the dream and you already think it's real. If I would tell you what I've been seeing that is not real, you will have been buried thousands of years ago. The devil is a liar. 
he tries to strike fear by the things he shows you and speaks to you and makes you feel so when you wake up in a dream and see that i have died don't start crying i don't die in a dream act or no they die listen 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 have you seen any movie that actor dies you you do you see so your dream is an is a movie and in that dream they say eventually the president died and people sat down and wept in a movie acts already died so that movie the producer is a liar <laughs> because in a normal movie the producer knows that actor never die. When an actor dies, it means that story is over. Like in a James Bond recently, no time to die. The main Bond died. It means he has he's been born in another movie, which is why he's also a lie. But in real movie of life, sir, actor, when you think it's this burial, then he will be the one attending his burial. He said, nah, he said, but you have died. He said, no way, actor never died. So you cannot see that I fail in the dream. You call 37 people. Our president has failed. You get 90, maybe bow. And he said, shut up. <laughs> Don't know they die. If you are an actor in God's plan for you and you saw your burial, then wake up and announce to the devil, the producer of that movie is a liar. <laughs> The main movie of my Jesus is that actor no day die. Hashtag actor no day die. So Jesus was the actor who was not supposed to die. So nobody made arrangement for his burial. Being the principal actor of the movie of God's salvation. Praise God. Glory to God. I'm excited this morning. <laughs> Nobody made arrangement. So Joseph and Rimatea had to. Joseph and Rimatea, by the way, my ancestors, people from my family. Bonana, Bonibibio, Mporon, Mpokobusem. The things that bury destinies in this place. The things that say ministries cannot rise and business cannot prosper. The things that make things more darker than any other thing. That make beauty. The things that make people glad when people fall. And anger and surprise when people succeed. That's Joseph Arimathea. Who has a tomb. And Bo just say, Jesus, come and, you know, you don't. So they brought Jesus and buried him in the tomb they should have used in burying me. So as I stand, so I no get tomb. And okay, because my horn had been taken by Jesus. And Jesus was not supposed to be buried, sir. Don't plan burial for me. When God calls me home, it's not burial, oh, I will be taken to heaven. So you, I have told you how you will lay my body. That's why I said, don't pretend like you are doing burial and do, and do um, people wear black. And then come and look at dead man's face. They say he's a lying state. <laughs> And people will travel all the way from nowhere. The enemy is to come and be sure that you are dead. My first one am. No, for can I'm to in one in one hour go be 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 in one in one. Then you're in song here me. But say me I'm telling you for me I'm powerful. Lying in state. Do you even know what goes on during what you call lying in state? Dare not do that. The angels that God sent to guard me, they will slap, slap somebody. No, you will not even, you cannot try that. I've told you how it will be. It's not burial, it's glory. Sing me and praise God over me the whole night and at the dawn, a rising of the sun, lay me to rest, wrapped in plentiful white garments. And lay me in a simple casket and put me in a secure tomb. That's all. That's not burial. It is glory. And sing and sing and sing and sing. And everybody wears white and dresses well. Give nobody food. Let them go home and eat. <laughs> Everything that people do in burial contradict it. Don't have morning house. Don't do anything. After that, go to the next station and preach. And let every life resume immediately. Nothing should be stopped. Because I am walking. And you should walk. walk. Nonsense. I'm not preparing for burial. In a, so burial is not just putting people in a place and covering. Burial is a spirit. The spirit of Kwenge. 
when I'm dead, it's not over. I'm beginning all over. You don't bury me. Bury is an, burial is an end. End to shame. An end to end. An end in shame. An end in disappointment. That's a, eh, 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 eh. And you want to jump into the grave. I will not hold you. Jump inside. Jump inside. Sincerely, jump inside. You will be the one to come out. <laughs> sorry i'm sorry here we worship burial more than we worship god i say i'm here i'm here with you friend. so joseph arimathea is from my ancestries and all our nation principality and power they had to bring their tomb say jesus come and be buried here since you don't have a tomb so that wherever they had planned to bury me when god makes me to emerge they say there is no burial place for him sir nothing can bury this god Nothing can bury. Nothing can bury. Ah, nothing can bury this life. Nothing can bury this light. Nothing can bury this moment. Nothing can bury what God has planned. Sir, if you are attached to this plan, nothing can bury you. You succeed. Burial is failure. Burial is shame. Going to be with the Lord is glory. It means well done party. This thing should change your mind. Otherwise, you serve Satan with self-fear and think you are serving God. There is always a master. Who is the master over you? Is it the devil? How do you know the devil is the master over you? Fear. How do you know God is the master over you? Peace. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and what? Joy! And the Holy Ghost. Every day, every time. Glory to God. So this is the first meaning of the tomb of Jesus. They laid him in his new tomb. They laid it in his new tomb. That of Joseph and Matthias, Which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone. Against the door of the tomb. And then did what? Departed. Glory to God. That was the final ceremony over my, over my shame. So it's over. But the meaning of that tomb means. Number one. Closure, closure. The whole story of Jesus has come to an end. Let it be like that. So the heavy stone was closure. Closure means an end, an end. It has come to an end. Final statement. When he said it is finished, the tomb was like a rejoinder. It did not finish when you say it. When you say it, now it is finished. Now, because when he said it is finished, means nothing else to be done. But by the stone being rolled there, it's like saying we can still do something and touch you. We can still do something and harm you. We can still do something. Can still do something. It's not over. Now we are speaking again. Like when God says deliver him and, and human beings uh, who will sit maybe in political places or, or in ministerial places or in social places or in family places. Family places like when somebody's husband is dead and families will just sit down and just decide how long you will live and what property will belong to you and all of that. It's like the stone that Joseph Arithmetia rolled and covered the tomb of Jesus. So it's over. We are the ones speaking the last word. Even this man was doing with good faith. He was doing, with, I mean, with good, with good heart and good intention. But it was like human beings are the one to decide what will happen. Good enough, he was a good man. But God says, it is not true. So that is the first meaning of the stone. The place to just close, bring closure to his ministry. Bring closure to his story. At least let's, yeah, young man, too, let it be like that. There was once a man, like a man wrote, there was once a country. There was once a country. There was once a deliverer. That is the meaning of the stone. Once means like Mary, like the, the sister, no, Martha, and even Mary joined it. If you had been here, my brother will not have died. That means it's too late to do anything. You were once a savior, but it's now too late. You cannot save him. It means there is a limit. So that stone is limit. Say limits. Closure. Okay. Let's move to the second meaning. But before then, I am speaking over you. If God has not said it, whoever says it is wrong. 
I say if God has not said it Whoever is saying it is wrong If God has not said so Whoever is saying so has made a mistake Because God has not said so The one who says so Will be the one to pay the price in the name of Jesus Be seated so every plan to bring closure to your joy. You say you want to see an ASEAN of all. So get ASEAN. That's the spirit of witchcraft. Bringing closure to glory. So get yes, ASEAN and you want to see an of all. Like why is this so, so, so arrogant and showy, showy and just showing around. That is why now when something happens. Uh, again, I'm then near zero. Have you heard things like that? It's witchcraft spirit. They love bringing closure to peace. They love to hear that the peace in that marriage is no longer there. They say, worry them, they hold their hands as if they are the first couple. What is, what is wrong with people holding their hands in public? What's wrong with people being peaceful? That it hurts you. And many of you are seated here and you are so angry that your friend has been blessed. You are so angry that somebody else is making it in life. You are so angry. And so you are, you are the Joseph, you are the spirit that wants to bring closure. And so many people, they don't even know they are witches and wizards. When there is any element of jealousy or envy in your heart, like we just got married, Jackson got married. And some people used to say that God told me that Jackson is my husband. And I'll be looking at Ezra. Uh, it's not everything I say. Now I can say it. I can say it. Uh, as if you didn't know I'm father. They say, hey, father. So what's wrong with that? They say, when some people come and tell you the spirit told me, I don't know which spirit. Now we know who is, who is Jackson's wife. Now we know. So all speculations over. The problem we have is that some people will want closure. Because it was not me. You need back and come eat up here. I mean, I'm night watch. A week train, you make a good music. I mean, I'm a night watch. This one that you are shouting, tell me why you are shouting. Yes, some people will think every day we are praying in tongues, we are watching in the night, and we are not the ones that are taken to the altar. Those who are not doing it are the ones. And such a spirit, let me tell you, the problem about that spirit is that when you begin to seek closure to their peace, you don't know. So that the day you hear, God forbid, in this case, it will never be heard. The day you hear, oh, this is not going right, that is not going right. Uh, that that is the baby the mother is in the bush is coming they were using that marriage to rub on our faces that's a spirit of they look for closure closure so when there is no more joy that, no no let me tell you it's so easy to think that I'm talking about another person set your heart Witchcraft is a heart thing. It's a spirit thing. Doesn't mean that you, you are in a coven. Or somebody calls you out in the night. Something calls you out. Calls you out of goodwill. Calls you out. Calls you out of wishing somebody well. Calls you out. Calls you out to look for a way of spreading rumor about people because you are, think, you are hoping what you are talking about should happen. things as a minister that every day you just ask God don't let me talk about it. so the one you hear the ones you hear the ones you should hear the secret things they belong to the Lord the ones revealed they are for you to do so you have to watch your heart the stone of closure they thought the story of Jesus was over and I'm speaking over somebody here 
The people are waiting to see your business over because their own had gone down and they are hoping your own will go down. People are now happy. Again, I'm, again, I'm there near zero. You were showing like, they are like, now, uh -huh. now, let me just tell you, today, there is a third day, there is a rising. If it did not hold Jesus, it will not hold you. Lift up your two hands and speak it. If it could not stop Jesus, if the stone of Joseph could not stop Jesus, if the stone of closure could not stop Jesus, if the stone of closure did not stop Jesus, if the stone of closure did not stop Jesus, it will not stop me. It will not stop me. Speak it, it will not stop me. It will not stop me. All I know is that the stone of Joseph did not stop Jesus. That one I know. If it did not stop Jesus, it's not stopping my marriage. It's not stopping my call. If it, not, it did not stop Jesus, it's not stopping my children. It's not stopping my career. If it did not stop Jesus, it's not stopping my health. It's not stopping my rising. If it did not stop Jesus, Hallelujah. it will not stop me from getting married. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Glory to God. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 27 verse 62 to 66. Gives us another understanding into the stone. This one is the stone of closure. On the next day which followed the day of preparation. The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate. Saying, sir, we remember while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days I will rise. Now, this second stone is an attack against rising again. The first stone was the end of it. The second stone is against the second beginning or the new beginning. Because Anastasis' resurrection is another rising. Coming back from failure and reigning. Coming back from sickness and being healthy. Coming back from shame and having glory. Coming back from defeat and having the victory. Coming back from darkness and living in light. Coming back from stagnation and walking in progress and speed. So, that is anastasis. That is the resurrection. So the second stone, I have taught you this. The attack on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't know whether it was in the first assembly or the second assembly. So this second stone, the, the mention of this, this, this stone in this context, the second meaning of this stone is an attack against another rising. It means it was okay to rise only once. Now that he has fallen, it should not rise again. Now that there is a bad story, there should be no repair. Now that there is sickness, there should be no healing. Now that there is a fall, there should be no rise. Now that there is this, there should be no doubt. So it's a preemptive kind of stone to block every kind of opportunity of a new story, of a comeback. So it's a stone of stones. It's a meaning beyond closure. It's a meaning of nailing the coffin all over. This is what the scripture is talking about. But the good thing is this, whether it is this or that, if it did not stop Jesus... <laughs> can't stop me <laughs> and the gates of hell could not prevail shall not prevail shall not prevail and the gates of hell shall not prevail shall not prevail do I tell you, uh, do you know that as I'm speaking, something is leaving your body? So you know when I'm speaking, I'm not preparing that after that I come and preach. As I'm talking, there's thunders, striking things and yokes are broken. Let me tell you, it, went, it was by the word the heavens were made. How does God oversee the heaven and the earth? 
by the word. So when I speak, witchcraft covens, they respond. I am speaking not from power, but from authority. The difference between authority and power is this. Power is ability, but authority is, authority is the right to use a, a power. Now, the one who has authority may not have power. It means, if one, for example, the, the governor of this state does not carry, or the governor of this state does not carry gun. The, the president of this nation does not carry gun. Does he carry gun? No. He has authority to ask policemen. He has authority to have, ask soldiers who carry gun to enter into a community. That's the danger of authority. I don't know preach by power. I you preach by authority. It means by the rights that God has given, for me, given to me for power. Authority is the right for power to act righteously. That means even the power of witchcraft can work against witches by the authority of God in my hand. I can speak whatever you carry that was to kill somebody you wanted to kill. Let it kill you. That is the power. That power begins to kill the one who carried the power by authority. So I have seen somebody by an encounter. I shared this with you many years ago when I was on a 40 days fast. Many years ago in a short ministry in Abuja. One of those afternoons I was, as I, I was praying I used to rise at that particular time of the day and pray over a particular situation. And as I prayed, somebody appeared in my trance and I saw that the person was trying to harm. Was trying, and I said something, the day you try that again, let what you try kill you. That afternoon, the person fell down somewhere and died. I was buried in the night. Not the following day. And I cannot talk about details. I had authority. And the power that was available was evil power that was intended to harm. But I use authority to overrule and tell power what to do. So authority is the right to tell power what to do. So I can tell the power of a witch to eat a witch. And the scriptures say those who contend against you, I will contend against them. And those who seek you will eat their flesh and do what? So the word of God is the exercise of authority. I have right to tell what wants to destroy another person to destroy the destroyer. It is right. It is, it is what I enjoy in the call. It's the authority of the call. It's the office. It's an official power. It's called exousia. Glory to God. I say glory to God. That's why witches and wizards, there are people they don't try. Because when you enjoy authority and you know you have authority, you can make a decree. Whoever did this nonsense, you will lie down for 20 years and you will not see light of the day. And that authority, the right to say that, means that the word goes forth. Wherever power is that will do that comes forth and it happens. That is why parents, a parent may be paralytic and lies down on a stretcher. But the son is a military general. When the son has problem against the righteous, that's a problem that breaks the righteous honor of the father. The father is helpless and dying. But the father can say, as you have treated me in this deathbed, so will you be treated. Years later, the person as a general falls down and is abandoned and rejected. Why? Because the father did not have power, but he had rights. And he spoke and power responded. That's why parents should know, should be careful what they say. If you cannot bless your children as a parent, don't say anything. Because whatever you say, you don't have power to do it. But you have right to say it. If you say evil, demons will use their power to execute it. If you say blessing, God will use his power. That way. That's the danger of authority. Don't joke with authority. So when I tell a young man, you will come and sit down in front of me, it's not power. I don't have power to send soldiers to arrest him and bring him. I don't have power to even mention his name. He will be an embarrassment. I don't have power to do anything, but I have rights to shut the next door that will take him to the next place. Because as I speak, wherever that power is, goes to work. I talked about someone who sits down in this place that came to me and talked and showed gratitude and showed gratitude and showed gratitude. The next time they came, 
And I discovered they are all girls. And I asked the young girl, the young girls, do you want a brother? Yes. I've told you this before. And I asked the next one, do you need a brother? I say yes. This one, do you need? Okay, go back with your brother. Go back with your brother. Go back with your brother. That month, pregnancy took place. And they didn't. Now they have a brother. I didn't have power to do that. I had rights to speak it from the office. And the power of fruitfulness responded. So why am I worrying you? Because some of you, you go to places that people have to call you out and do drama. And it does not change your life. It does not change your story. You are trying to interpret my call according to your familiar place of emptiness. As I speak, whatever has been keeping you, rise to your feet. If God sends you to me today and I send and send me to you, wherever you are, lift up your two hands. As I speak, let power from God go forth. Wherever there are chains, wherever there are stones, stones that God did not set up, stones that God did not roll into place, stones that come from envy, stones that come from death, let whatever could not stop Jesus not ever rise, rather let them be broken in the name of Jesus. He did not stop him. It's not expected to stop you. If it stops you, it's because you, you allow it, you support it. I have to begin today by telling you that your choices can support your death. Your choices can support your failure. You can cooperate through your choices with what wants to destroy you. And God grants you what you want. The scripture says, seek you shall find. Be careful what you seek. <laughs> knock, it shall be open. Whatever you knock will be open. So be careful what you knock. Ask and it shall be granted. You Be careful what you ask because there is a law behind it. So be careful in your seeking. The reason of needing the word of God, the reason of the word of God, wisdom and knowledge in the word of God so that you will know what to seek. You will know what to knock. You will know what to ask. Because you can ask for what will shame you. You can seek for what will swallow you. And you can actually knock at the door that will end your story. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the burial cloth be taken from somebody's face. Father, in the name of Jesus, let territorial stones standing against the call of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, let ancestral stones standing against marriages and businesses. Let these stones that could not stop Jesus, let them be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Something is leaving somebody not by suggestion, but by the power of God who gave me authority to speak. I've given you authority to trample upon sex. And scoping and to overcome all, not some, everything, all things under the influence of this call. And they are called stones that limit, stones that restrict, stones that hold back, stones that hold back people from living, hold back people from surviving, from thriving and prospering. Ah, I command you did not stop Jesus, you cannot stop the child of God now. In the name of Jesus, be rolled away. Glory to God. So sickness is healed. Ah, uh, I come to your office. I don't care whether it's an, a director that plays a stone, whether it's a governor, whether it's a, gov it's a commissioner, whether it's from the federal, it's political, it's religious. Somebody against you. Somebody here. Your boss asks you out as a woman and you said no. From that day, the entire system turned against you. I transfer your boss in seven days. I transfer your boss in seven days. I transfer your boss in seven days. That's not the greatest news. The greatest news is that your boss will hand over to you. He will hand over to you. He will hand over to you. Talking about 
talking about one person in this place. We see that. Halabosha and that. Come with the fire. Halabosha. Come with the war. Refresh my soul. Come heavenly. Come with the glow. <laughs> Come sweet divine. Refresh my soul. I love this. Matthew chapter 27. On the next day, which followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate and said, Sir, we remember while he was still alive, how that, that, that deceiver said, After three days I will rise. Therefore, let's stop these three days. Let's stop this resurgence and the coming back. Let's make sure the closure is permanent. Let's leave no room for a return. Let's leave no room for thanksgiving. Do you know when we, what we do in thanksgiving is a celebration of things not going the way the devil expected. Sir, so if, it, if it ends the way the enemy wanted, that's not thanksgiving. It's called mourning. But the scripture says it turned my mourning into dancing. Jesus My eldest brother who comes here, you don't know he's a musician. It's one of his best songs. You know, in my family, this thing runs like Bofo. It's the best. He has produced a couple of things, but this one is my best. I'm not sure my brother will know I have the best in his song list. Jesus, that is, he has lighted my darkest night. He has lighted my darkest night. <laughs> He has lighted my darkest night. <laughs> Jesus has lighted my darkest night. Kalabosha. Ormegango gesiemi. Ya la la la. Ormegango gesiemi. Say ormegango gesiemi. Jesus ormegango gesiemi. He's a better singer, better in everything, better. Glory to God. Glory to God. So we don't want the lights to come in this night. So this stone, this particular scripture is talking about let the night be night forever. And let what is dark be darker. And let what is bad be worse. Let destruction be more destructing. And let everything evil be more evil. That's what this scripture is talking about. This is another stone. Another stone is that let it grow. But let it not grow from worse to good to better. But let it grow from bad to worse. And if it reaches worse, let it get to the deeper region of worse. And if it reaches the end of worse, then let it start at a higher degree of worse. And start all over. This is what this stone is about. You know, when you read the scripture, there are underlining stuffs. <laughs> there are underpinning things. And there are backdrops of the spiritual where you can see human story and it is when you see this story that you can intervene by the same word and repair and restore and change so they said that deception of the latter days will be worse they were against the anastasis not of Jesus because, because Jesus didn't need death he didn't need the flesh in birth he didn't need death and didn't need to rise so it was me. I'm the one who needed death because I came in the flesh. I'm the one who needed to pay the price in order to see redemption. And I'm the one who needed to overcome in the resurrection. But Jesus did this for me. You shall soon see it. And then Pilate granted them their request. Pilate said, ah, but you know what to do, right? So don't worry. You have a guard. Verse 65. You have a guard, don't you? Go your way, won't you? Make it as secure as you know how. Should you not? So they went and made the tomb secure, which means no rising again, no shining again, no thanksgiving again. We did quark, you know, there is a song we usually sing. What is the song? Yeah. So this stone means. We begin man equal. 
means there will be a song again in my side. There will be a song again in my family. After this pain, there will be a song. In, that means his hope. That song is hope. That this situation is not the last. It's coming to pass. But this particular, the meaning of stone, of Jesus' stone, in this case, means there will be no song again. Enough of your song. This is the end of the story. Game home. Game done. Home game. Whatever you call it. It's done. Deal done. But that's not the will of God. Let me tell you something. Why do we say that because they could not stop that of Jesus, they cannot stop me? This, is, this ministry is for believers. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't love Jesus, if you don't serve Jesus, this, you can hear this word. It does not make any sense in your life. There can be interventions here and there, but you don't have rights to it. Your repentance and accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is the qualification you have to enjoy what this word says. So even as I'm speaking, take a decision. Accept the call to salvation. Repent of your sin. Say, Lord, I am no longer that I have accepted your mercy, your forgiveness. Repent. Why? How can the stone of Jesus become your stone? How can the rolling away of the stone of Jesus be the rolling away of your stone? How can the victory of Jesus become your victory? Luke chapter 22, verse 19 and verse 20. Luke chapter 22, verses 19 and 20. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. When he took the bread, what was in that bread was the price he would pay on the cross. That's not all. Another thing was in that bread, the resurrection. So his death and resurrection, everything he will do for our redemption and for us to have another life, for us to have eternal life after this life, for us to be healed after sickness, for us to be restored after weakness, for us to be lifted after demotion, for us to be made on the path of speed after years of stagnation, all that will be required to turn human stories around in healing and redemption and in restoration and revival in another chance and second chance and breaking forth from from every evil, breaking boundaries and crossing hurdles, everything was wrapped up in the bread. This is what many people don't understand. That is why the Holy Spirit won't allow me to let you rest. That we have to break every protocol and have one communion service. That we have a united assembly, the common assembly of Grace Family. Why? Everything we preach about is in the bread. Sir, I knew this as a young Catholic. I have shared this with you. You know, so as a Catholic priest, I lived on the bread. I celebrated more masses for myself. Mass is nothing. Many non-Catholics, when they hear of mass, they hear some magic. Mass is nothing other than breaking of bread. Every ritual put about, put around it, is the development of a religious institution the church but the main thing in the commun in the main thing in the mass of the catholic church is take this and eat that's all everything was to prepare for that and everything leads to that that means if you strip everything away that stands alone that's why in here i don't do the whole ritual of the catholic church because i saw through it sir. i stored it whoever has known me may not believe in me may not agree with me but they know i have an understanding not just that i have the spirit of god i've been given a cute mind a cute mind that perceives. So I could see through things that are historical. And I saw things that were spiritual. So the spiritual was what Jesus Christ said. Take this. Eat it is it's for you. Do this in, in remembrance of me means take this and eat it. It is for you. Every time to remember what I did for you. It is the bedrock of Christianity. I'm currently reading through history of the church from a different perspective from what I've been hearing. And it keeps going back to the basic things we had learned. This person is not a Catholic or whatever, but talks about the early church that was centered around the Eucharist, the breaking of bread. So when you hear some new churches that say there is nothing like the blood of Jesus Christ, there is nothing like communion and all of that. <laughs> they know something. Just that what they know is not what should be known. It's not the essence of Christianity. 
Christianity is not a modern, it's not a modern social media movement. <laughs> it's an ancient mystery of the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. <laughs> glory to God. I say glory to God. So this is the justification. He said, take this. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, take, take this. This is my body. Which is given for who? Come on. Given for who? I mean, this body is given for you. This death that I'm about dying is for you. The burial that is about taking place is for you. Everything I will go through is for you. The stripes that will be on my body for you. The crown on my head for you. Whatever the crown on my head was supposed to do is for you. That, that means on account of this crown, there are certain things that should not crown you. On account of this crown, there are certain crowns that must crown you. On account of my wounds, there are wounds that should not be upon you. There are diseases that should not be upon you. Upon the death that I will die, there is a death that is not your death. Upon the burial that I will be burial, there is a burial that is no longer yours. I took yours uh, and I made it mine. Uh, so your death is my death. Uh, your death is my death. Therefore, this is for you. This is for you not to die. This is for you. This is for you not to be sick. Uh, this is for you. This is for you not to see shame. This is for you. This is for you not to, not to go down. And should you go down, watch me on the third day I will rise. Remember that when you go down, it's not the last. Uh, that there is a rising again. When there is a stumbling, remember, this is for you to rise. Uh, when there is weakness, remember, it is for you to be strong. When there is a fall, remember, it's for you to be up. Anastasis. Rise and speak in the Holy Ghost. I have what it takes to rise again. Rise and speak. I have what it takes to rise. It's for me. It's for me. The body is for me. The blood is for me. I have what it takes not to be buried by Satan. I have what it takes not to see shame. It is for me. All that he saw, the shame was for me. So that I will not see shame. The resurrection was for me. So that I will rise again. For me. 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 Just speak it out. It's for me. It's for me. The whole story of Jesus is for me. The whole story of Jesus is for me. It's for me. If the stone could not stop him, then he cannot stop me. Because he was about me. I was buried in his burial. I died in his death. I paid the price in his payment. I was ransomed in his ransom. Oh, I was washed in the blood. It did not stop him. It is too late. It cannot stop me. It did not hold him. It is too late. It cannot hold me. Speak into your office. You stone in the 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 office. Oh, you stone in the office. Oh, you stone in the office. Oh, you stone in the family. Oh, you stone in the ancestry. Oh, you stone in the marketplace. Oh, you stone. Oh, you stone. Did you hold him? Then hold me. You couldn't hold him. You cannot hold me. Did you stop him? Then stop me. You couldn't stop him. You cannot stop me. Oh, you stone. You could not hinder him. How dare you think that I am hinderable? Oh, ye stone. You could not bury him forever. How dare you think if he died for me, I have already paid the price. If he rose for me, I'm already rising. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore, <laughs> for endless days. 
praise. We will see your praise. That there will be a song in the family. There will be a song in the generation. The womb will have children. The health will be recovered. Businesses will come back to life. Obstacles cannot stand. It did not stand, Jesus. It is not standing you. It did not stand the Messiah. It is not standing the one that has been saved by the Messiah. His stone was rolled away. That stone too is rolled away. Hallelujah, and I will praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore for endless days we will sing your praise oh lord oh lord our god yes it did not stop him from rising it cannot stop my my womb from being pregnant it did not stop him from rising it cannot stop me from breaking through it did not stop him from rising. It will not stop me from restoration. It will not stop me from revival. It will not stop me from the fire. Ah, the fire of grace is burning. The power of the spirit is moving. Glory to God. It did not stop him. It cannot stop me. because it is for you it is for you the cup also is for you that means this whole death thing was for you that means it's rising from the dead was for you it's rising from the dead means nothing could hold him the stone of Joseph could not hold him the conspiracy of the Jews, the leaders of the Jews could not stop him, be seated just one scripture, two scripture you are going to pray with this. I have told you that the help, issue of the help is this week. No. We pray the help from next Sunday. This week we are dealing with the stone is rolled away. I am out. So it's a prophetic declaration after this. As you receive the communion it shall be. If he did not stop him, he cannot stop me. Then from tonight in the prayer belt as you wake up is that he did not stop him. So the stone is rolled away. I am out. I am is a is a declaration in every area since the stone did not stop him therefore it is rolled away in my own case then i am out so one week of prophetic declaration in a particular way particular way so you you stone you are no longer there you are rolled away i am out that's what we are praying this week look at this scripture mark chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4 i'm done now when the sabbath was passed mary magdalene mary mary the mother of james and the uh, salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen and they said among themselves who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us but when they looked up what did they see now tell me what did they see that the stone had been rolled away. What does this mean? Though it was very large, but it was rolled away. 
the scripture is making it very clear here. It's emphasis. It was large. The stone was not rolled away because it was small. The stone was not rolled away because it was not significant. It was very large. But it was rolled away. Now, what this means is that this stone did not hold him. Is that correct? The testimony here is that this stone did not stop him. Is that correct? And if he said, this stone, I die for you. I am buried for you. And if the stone could not, could not hold him, is it for you? Okay. Take this and it means, I suffer for you. I die for you. I rise for you. Do this to remember that I did all of this for you. And then the stone could not stand him, could not stop him from rising. Is it for you? Some people are not aware. Let me help you again. Some of you, I don't know what you hear when I'm talking. And you will shout. The devil is not afraid of your shout. He's afraid of what you know. The devil is not intimidated by hallelujah. The devil is intimidated by the knowledge of the one who sings hallelujah. Let's go back to this. I say he took the bread. We looked at it in Luke's gospel. Chapter 22 verse 19 down. Take this. It is for you. And I've taken time to explain this for you. Means this death is, is for you. That means the wounds. Everything on my body. All that I will suffer is for you. That also means the burial is for you. My rising. Since I didn't need to die. I was not in need of burial. It means my rising is for you. And the stone was rolled away. The stone could not hold it. Could not hold him. Is it for you? What does it mean for you? Talk about what it means for you. Talk about it. Write down what it means. Because it is proven. This is it. Once you, once you are done writing down what it means for you, rise. We are eating communion this, after, this morning. And whatever that means for you, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done giving you a sense of the world. I use different ways to drive the revelation. I use stories. I use cajoling. I use all sort of things. I get angry. Everything is, all, everything is to make sure you receive it. Keep speaking. The stone could not hold him. The stone was rolled away. It was for me. So that no stone, no stone will hold me. It means every stone of Satan, every stone of witches and wizards, every stone of the devil, every stone of my mistake, every stone of my ancestry, every stone of corrupt system, every stone of lying leaders and leadership, every stone of useless political calculation, every stone of deceit, every stone of corruption, every stone of defeat, you could not stop Jesus. I live the life of Jesus now. For the scripture says, all of us who have been buried with him in baptism, we have put on Christ. Every one of us that have been baptized into him, we have put on Christ. Putting on Christ means in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20, no longer I, but Christ lives. This life I live is the life of Christ. I have no purpose. I have no business on earth. I have the purpose of Christ. I have the business of Christ. I have no life on earth. I have the life of the Son of God. I have no ambition on earth. I have ambition of the Son of God. The only reason I preach is because of the preaching of the Son of God. The only reason I am victorious is because of the victory of the Son of God. I don't have an enemy. I have the enemy of the Son of God. What happened between him and his enemy is what happens between me and the enemy. How it ended with his enemy that the stone could not hold him. That is how it ends with the enemy. The stone cannot hold me. Let me tell you why you don't understand it. Because your business is not for God, it's for you. Your marriage is not about God, it's for you. Your health is not about God is for you. Your ministry is not about God is for you. We are in grace family. 
Now ministers are back to pray. Now ministers are back to come out to pray. Now we are in the time of finding out that ministers don't know God. Why? Their lives are their lives. They expect the victory of God. No, the victory of God is for the Son of God. The one who lives for the Father. The one that has said, I did not come to do my will, but the will of my Father who sent me. The reason this word doesn't apply to you, because your life is about you. You do whatever you like with your life. Your life is not about honoring God. Because of that, the stone has permission to stand against you. And when you cry, there is no answer. When you are the son, saved in the son, it means your life has been given to God. That means all your trouble becomes the trouble of God. If he could not stop the son, he cannot stop you. Rise to your feet. Today is the day of consecration. Rise to your feet. Lift your two hands. So I surrender this life. There are many children of God who are saved, but they have not surrendered. Saved, but their marriage is not surrendered. Saved, their sexual life, emotional life, not surrendered. Saved, their financial life, not surrendered. Saved, their jobs, they are not ministries, not surrendered. They don't do things to please God. They marry to please themselves. They serve to please themselves. I heard of a young girl that was prepared for ministry. All she wanted was to sing in the seraphs. And she went and her voice was not good enough to be accepted. She left church and never returned. She was healed in this place miraculously through the word of God. And she testified there. And I've been looking for, I said, what of the girl that stood naked before the brother? The, the thing she went through was such that she could not cover her nakedness before the brother. A girl who is between last days of 20 years and 30 years into her 30s. She said she could not cover her nakedness before the brother. She was here. A word of knowledge healed her instantly. That girl is no longer in Grace family. The last time I asked her, I saw her friend. What happened to your friend? I've not been seeing her. She was consistent in all the training. Said she went for audition in Sarah's. She didn't like it. This, this, this. So she stopped coming to church. Stop coming to church because you could not sing and therefore there was nothing else you could do for God means it's not God she said another young woman that we have to literally stand in the gap for God will not let me sleep every day say call this girl this girl is about being killed and I will call her strange sickness and diseases rally people I will send ministers go look for this girl make sure she comes down here stood in the gap the health began to rise I looked for her, I no longer saw her in church. What happened? Because I was no longer active in so-so-so group. And they told me uh, that I, I, now, now I'm no longer in the team. I should step down. You didn't come back to me. I'm no longer coming to church. I'm doing online. See, see what I mean. It means men and women that you see, they save themselves. It is not God. And it, it breaks my heart that day and night you are teaching. And there are uncircumcised pagan hearts. Those are the things I face as a leader. And I ask God, give me courage to stand. Give me courage to stand. How will you hear such a thing as a leader? Somebody you pour your life into personally. What of those you don't even know personally? And these are the ones who pour, you stand in the gap. These ones you know. It's not the spirit telling you pray for somebody who wants to die. But this one, he said this person. And you confirm this person is about dying. This person is about living. You stand in the gap. It means the time has not come for this person. And in the process, I'm no longer in church. Ah! Who bewitch you? Some of you here, you struggle because for you, you have a business that has nothing to do with God. For you, you struggle because you have a marriage that you don't need to take any instruction from anybody to marry. You don't need to obey any standard of God. I want to get married. Let it be according to how I want. And then the day you need God, God becomes your truck pusher. So when you go to the market, the next trust pusher, the one that is available is the one that helps you. And so people come to church to meet a God, the truck pusher, who is available to carry their load. Just with a fee that you came that day. This is why this word doesn't apply to many. It's a day of surrender. 
Who are you? Are you registered in the book of those? It says, it is written on that, on that stone. God knows those. Who are his own? Is your name written? He cannot say it's for you. The scripture says, for many. You, if you are in among the many that have accepted him, for God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, you must be that whoever, before this applies to you. Let's do a brief consecration as we come to it, that this communion will not be against you. Because the scripture says, some died, some became weak and sick, because they ate without discernment. Because they ate like they were eating some ritual food from shrines of demons that needs no cooperation from their lives. Lift your two hands, close your eyes. Please surrender. If God comes today, if he calls you today, where will you be? Is your name written in the book of life? Does he know you? Do you know him? Is your name written among the saved? If you have been saved, have you surrendered? Is there the mark of his ownership in your life? Is there the mark of his ownership in your business? Is there the mark of his ownership in your marriage? Does your marriage honor God? Does your sexuality honor God? Does your relationship honor God? Does your job honor God? Does your business honor God? Does your ministry honor God? And you say things are so hard. God has a way of preserving his own. You're in a generation that God is looking for who will be Diana to you. Who will be close to God because he loves me. Because he has set his heart upon me. Because he's close to me. I will make a difference between him and others. Are you in the difference book of God? Are you in the priority list of God? Does he know you as those, one of those who have surrendered? One of those who have surrendered to him. Lift up your two hands and say, I surrender. I surrender his life. Kalabosh. Kalabosh. Please speak. Are you known as one of those who have surrendered? How much do you surrender? Is it some or all? Mention the things you are yet to surrender. Give that to him. Seraphs, can you come here? Mary, can you come here? Can I hear look to the lamb? Can I hear to the lamb? Wherever you are, this is the time of consecration. When last did you surrender? What is it in your life that you claim to be your own? Somebody went to be with the Lord yesterday. Somebody did not go with anything. Nothing mattered. Something, nothing mattered. The day you will be called away, your land will not matter. Your house will not matter. Your wife will not matter. Your girlfriend will not exist. If right now your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your sex life and friend is the reason why God doesn't make sense. If right now because you steal in your business, steal in the office, the reason because you belong to secret cult and occult is the reason. The day you will be called home, demons will escort you and what you serve will kill you. Anything you said that is not God is your death and destruction. You will not go to hell. I call you back to salvation. Call you back to salvation. Wherever you are, it is time to speak. 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 Time to speak. Just speak wherever you are. 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 Say, Lord, I give. Give this heart. Give this soul. I give. Say, I give anybody in my life that is an obstacle. I give anybody in my circle that is an obstacle. I make donations. Say, if your eyes, your right eye will cause you to sin, let it go. If your right hand will let you sin, let it go.
You are speaking. You don't need to sing. They say I will minister in song. I say I surrender. 